People have been talking about this theory for years. They've drawn detailed diagrams, made conspiracy boards, were all convinced, and I can't believe the show just dismissed all that with the reveal that Steve Rogers lost his virginity to a USO girl in 1943? Hey, hey, come on, I haven't even given the spoiler warning yet! Oh, please, by the time people watch this, it'll already be on the Twitter trending sidebar! I wonder, did she mean anything to him? Regardless, I hope they had fun. Stop it. I'm Gayfesh, and today we'll be talking She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Season 1, Episode 1, A Normal Amount of Rage. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. There's not an awful lot to give away in the first episode other than what Bean rudely spoiled. I make no apologies. But here's your spoiler warning anyway. So I don't really get the whole Ally McBeal feel for this show yet, but honestly, I can respect what this first episode did. So many of these Marvel shows are a slow burn where the character doesn't even get their powers until the end of the first episode, or possibly later. It feels to me they wanted to fast track her origin so they can get to the meat of the story, which is single female Hulk lawyer. So this whole episode is spent explaining how she got her powers and learning to control them. Having seen the movie Prey recently, I can already anticipate some whinging from a certain subset of the internet, and I must reiterate that her name is Jen, not Mary Sue. Y'all don't actually know what a Mary Sue is, which sucks because you'd have more of an argument here than you did on Prey. I haven't read a lot of She-Hulk comics, but it is my understanding that she was always far more integrated and comfortable with her Hulk persona than Bruce was. So if that's your complaint, take it up with a 40-year-old comic book written by John Buscema and Stan Lee. After Jen accidentally gets some of Bruce's blood in her system during a routine car crash after almost hitting a spaceship, you know, normal Avengers stuff, he takes her to a Mexican hideaway so she can learn to control her powers. But the whole episode shows that she actually is already in very good control. She doesn't have an alternate personality in Hulk form, and she already has very good control over her emotions due to being a female lady woman living under the patriarchy. Don't mind me if I sound a little cynical, I would love it if the show did more than surface level acknowledgement of these issues, but considering this is the company that gave us this remake, something tells me that's all we're getting. And I know you're all asking about her other well-known power, and yes, she breaks the fourth wall. It seems like it's gonna be a Malcolm in the Middle style narration rather than Deadpool's whole shtick of breaking the fourth wall specifically to point out that he's breaking the fourth wall. That being said, the first time she does it, she seems surprised that she's done it, so it may end up being more acknowledged that that's what she's doing. Either way, once the multiverse brings Deadpool into the MCU, in Secret Wars probably, we're surely going to get a scene between the two of them. After she insists that she doesn't want to be a superhero, she just wants to be a lawyer, and she doesn't want to be held captive at the Mexican hideout when she's got a job waiting for her at home, they end up having a bit of a Hulk brawl before he acknowledges that her experience is different from his and he has to stop assuming everything's going to be the same. He does tell her to give him a call if she has any Hulk questions, but it feels like she's got things pretty well under control and Mark Ruffalo is probably asking for too much money to show up in more than two episodes this season. She returns to her lawyer job where we meet her best friend Nikki, a paralegal, and she just kind of returns to normal life. That is, until Jamila Jamil's character Titania smashes through a courtroom during closing statements, and Jen has to hulk out to punch her. I wish I could say more about that, but that's really truly all the lawyer stuff we get this week. I can't complain, they got the origin story out of the way nice and fast, but it does make it hard to gauge how the rest of the show will go. So what did y'all think of the new show? Let me know in the comments below! I know it sounds old-fashioned of me, but I was really hoping Steve had saved it for Peggy. Oh, come on, do you think Peggy saved it for Steve? Peggy could sleep with whoever she wants. Captain America is God's righteous man. Yeah, always a good sign when you're quoting Ultron. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thank you to all my patrons, with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.